Wikipedia describes Japanese horror as generally noted for its unique thematic and conventional treatment of the horror genre, differing from the traditional Western representation of horror. Japanese horror tends to focus on psychological horror, tension building, and supernatural horror, particularly involving ghosts and poltergeists. And while this definition isn't wrong, it bothers me. Mainly because that isn't how I got into Japanese horror at all. Before I watched Ring or Juan, I would soak up some of the least subtle, least suspense-driven, completely ghost-free entries into the Japanese horror genre. These movies were bloody, sleazy, and made extremely cheaply sometimes. This was my introduction to Japanese horror, and it all began with a little film called Meatball Machine. Meatball Machine is a 2005 tokusatsu film that straddles the line between action and horror. The general premise is that Earth has been invaded by these ballsack looking aliens who can physically attach and fuse themselves to humans, becoming these things called necroborgs. This premise mostly stays in the background of the film early on as our lead character, Yoji, pines after Sachiko. Just as their relationship is about to start, Sachiko's body is hijacked and becomes a necroborg. Ultimately, this leads Yoji down the path of becoming a necroborg himself, albeit one that's more in control of his own body. The film's bloody climax is a one-on-one -on -one death match between Sachiko and Yoji, two human meatball machines just meatballing it out for everyone to see. The film was directed by Yudai Yamaguchi and Junichi Yamamoto the latter of which made the original short film that Meatball Machine was based on. The original short film is similar in premise, strange alien machines making people into weird Tetsuo zombies. However, it has an even simpler execution. It dives straight into the action without really even setting up our main characters. What's most noticeable is the effects, which are now incredibly low budget, but not unimpressive, especially considering that they probably had no money to speak of but a lot of the building blocks for what Meatball Machine would be are laid out here in this original short film. And did you know? Junichi Yamamoto is extremely active on Twitter. Here he posts about his toy collection, some art, and this one really funny picture with me in it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yamamoto-san was nice enough to sit down and talk with me about Meatball Machine. So from this point on, I'll be cutting between clips from his interview and the making of special feature on Meatball Machine, which does not feature Yamamoto at all for reasons that I'll explain later on. Yamamoto-san was very easy to talk to, not just about Meatball Machine, but about horror in general. This desire for special effects driven kills seems to be what motivated Yamamoto san to make the original short film in the first place. And it certainly doesn't waste any time getting to the kills. Of course, Meatball Machine wasn't just made to spite Ring, it was also influenced by one of my all time favorite directors. やっぱり鉄道ですね。
後手後手の鉄道みたいなやつの中に誰かがいてそいつが操縦してるっていうでもそれって、あのー、ものすごくあの日本映画的というか日本のアニメ的な発想でなかなか外人は発想しないもんなんです Today, you can find Yamamoto san's original short film as a 13 minute cut on the old Meatball Machine DVD. However, it wasn't always that short. The original film is 62 minutes. The Meatball Machine is a DVD. 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 While the original short film is an admirable take on horror tokusatsu, It probably would have stayed a small little project released straight to video had it not been for one man, Yamaguchi Yudai. Tomoacho Kantok no Yamaguchi Yudai, Jiboku Oshento, Totten Karega, eh, to Mitobol Machine, or Ega Gaisha, the producer, and show us the Kurta. So they did he. So on Tokyo, Ega Gaisha, the producer, and Yamaguchi, and そういうゴアな映画を撮りたいということでリメイクしよう「怪談シーミミ袋」という、えっとまあ、J ホラーの、えっと、テレビシリーズを僕がやってましてそれの、えー、第2シーズンで山口雄大監督に、えー、何話か監督してもらったんですよね、まあ、それがきっかけになって結構、えー、山口雄大監督と親しくさせていただいてまして。彼の友達のある監督が、えー、インディーズ版で撮ってる、えー、映画があるんだけどそれがすごい面白いんでこれを、あのー、リメイクしたら面白いんじゃないかと。But still, just because Yamaguchi was in didn't mean that Yamamoto was out, at least not entirely. で僕はあのオリジナル版の方の監督の山本君にどうしてもやってほしかったのでじゃあ僕はサポートする役割で入るんで彼、まあ、何のキャリアもなかったんですけど<笑>彼を監督で。With Yamaguchi supporting Yamamoto, the two set out with one goal handed down by their producer. Horror is a good one, but it's a good one. 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 あのー、そういうがっちりとホラーな特撮っていうものがないなと思っていまして。And with this in mind, Yamamoto was potentially perfect. He was unproven but clearly passionate for the world of special effects. で、やっぱり僕はオリジナルというか、既存の映画の模倣、コピーみたいな、あの映画でやってたらこれをやりたいと。そうです特撮はすごい好きで僕は。あの CG とか嫌いなんですよ。今、ゴジラも CG になったりして、yeah, yeah. そういうアナログな特撮っていうのはちょっと、うん、飽きられちゃったのかな。I don't know if you saw Shin Uchutaman,、uh, but all the effects are CG, but they're made to look like old effects. バカバカしいです。<笑> yeah, that, that's ridiculous. <笑><笑>大丈夫です。<笑> But of course, passion only gets you so far. Meatball Machine needed experience and talent. So, Japanese gore legend Yoshihiro Nishimura was brought on for makeup and practical effects. Nishimura さんは、えー、とリメイク版の方に参加してるんですけども、それはもうプロ,プロデューサーの山口さんが出てきた。で、その以前にも Nishimura さんの自主映画を見てて、僕は。Nishimura at the time had at least a reputation in the world of Japanese special effects and horror, but he would also be working off brand new Necroborg designs from a veteran in the tokusatsu field, Keita Amamiya. I'm a designer, 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 これはこの予算では絶対できないよっていうことを、えー、とそ打ち合わせで言ったんですね、まあ、そういうふうに言われていや絶対やってやるっていうのを逆に思ってしまって、えー、それはえっ、ー、とですねちょっとそれはですねえっ、ー、と最初に雨宮さんから、えーまあ、この予算だからあのデザインは上げるけれどもあのその
まあ、いいように西村さんいいように、えっと、作りやすいように変えてコンセプトだけ変えてくれなければ問題ないよって言ってくれたんで結構僕はミートボールっていうから結構ミートボールっぽく作っちゃったりしててで動きにくかったっていうのはしょうがないと思います<笑>そういうもんだと思います I wanted to ask if there were any、uh, challenges that Uh, you had creating、uh, practical gore effects. Well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to be able to do it. Despite those difficulties, the team pushed forward and things seemed to be going well at that point. It was only after they wrapped up their week of shooting that the real trouble began. Well, I'm going to be able to do it. 終わっていてあの分量であの本でえそんな大丈夫っていうもう本当連日徹夜だと思ってたんでまあそれはプロ仕事としてはいいんだろうけどあの普通に不登校なく終わるのはいいんだろうけどでそれを編集して見てみるとやはり当初思い描いてたものとどうやら違うもともとその雨宮さんが「いやいやこんな予算じゃできないよこれ」って。行って始まったものなのでみんな誰もがそう思った中で始まったものなので当初から無理がある当初から無理があってでみんなの中で役者も含めて全員が無理だけど無理を承知でやろうっていう熱意を持って撮影に入った作品だったのでこの仕上がりでは僕らは満足できないっていうのがあったのでもうちょっとなんとかしようよっていう話だったんです。Reshoots would have to be done quickly so that they would still have the actors together in the area, but time was running out fast. And they were about to have a major hurdle thrown their way. 5年の3月、4月で1週間。で、その間は、うん、やっぱり、あの、山本君初監督で、で、緊張もしてるだろうし、どうやっていいかわかんないだろうしっていうのがあったんで、その、事前のサポートはできるだけ。しようと思ったんですねただ現場に僕が行ってるとやっぱり本人がやりづらいだろうなと思ったので現場にはほとんど行かなかったですね最初と最後だけ、えー、いうことになって、まあ、8月のその追察の準備に合わせてしてたところで、まあ、山本純一監督が、まあ、ちょっと病気をしてしまいまして、えー、どうしてもその頃の撮影には間に合わないというか撮影するのは無理だという。で、山本くんに了解を取って、じゃあ残りは僕がやるけどいいね。やってください。お願いします。っていうことだったので、じゃあ、あの、残りは責任を持って僕がやります。ということで、えー、考え始めましたね。それまでは監修って立場で、あくまで山本十一作品として、僕もスタンスとしては、そのスタンスで行ったんだけども、で、やっぱ監督になるっていうと視点がやっぱりちょっと違ってて、でいや,やっぱこうしたいなああしたいなっていうのがどんどんどんどん出てきて The remaining half of Meatball Machine was finished by Yamaguchi On one hand he was an experienced director who probably wouldn't fall for the same beginner traps that Yamamoto would have On the other hand the film might come out feeling disconnected Their styles might clash too much そこがどういうふうにミックスされるんだろうなっていう不安とも,もしかしたら僕のところにすごく気があったんじゃないか大丈夫だろうかっていう不安っていうものがごっちゃになってた感じ。And the end result was a little disconnected, but that's okay. As a finished film, Meatball Machine at times feels a little at odds with itself. It's a movie that wants to be taken seriously with dark dramatic elements, but ultimately revels in the absurdity of its own gore. And to me, that's a feature, not a bug. And apparently, I'm not the only person that feels this way. ブルステルに、まあ、招待してもらったのは本当に嬉しいことで、まさにブルステルが昔の東京ファンタの客の味方だったんですよ。なんかブルセルの客の中で盛り上がった時にあの歌う歌みたいなのがどうやらあるらしくて誰かがやり始めるリズムを取り始めるんですねそうするとみんなが合唱で始まるんですよでそれがリズムっていうか歌になっちゃう感じなんだけど
それがね後半ずっとそんな感じになっていてで幸子が幸子の手の形態が変わるじゃないですかノコギリになったり銃になったりってもう変わるたんびに大歓声だから見ててねあこのために作ってるなってファンゴリアにあのミートボールの特集が1ページ丸々1ページ載ったっていうのはすごく嬉しいことで僕は小学生の頃からファンゴリアまあ英語だったからその当時は読めなかったけど毎月楽しみにして買ってた雑誌の一つなんでまああのアメリカでは一番売れてるホラー雑誌だしそれに載ったのはすごく嬉しい。Meatball Machine was not the first Japanese splatter movie. Those have existed since the 60s. But looking back, it does feel like it was the start of a new era of J horror. A new trend of more violent, more bloody, and more campy horror movies that would sweep through Japan and wash up on the shores of America. But of course, the man who rode this wave the highest had to be Nishimura. Just a few years after Meatball Machine, Nishimura would provide special effects for The Machine Girl and Tokyo Gore Police, the latter of which he even directed. These two films would be big hits that really would kick off Japan's splatter era, eventually leading to the creation of the Sushi Typhoon Production Company, which would produce such quality schlock like. Mutant Girl Squad and Zabogar. But ultimately, it was not meant to last. There was a slow decline in these special effects driven genre movies around 2010 to 2011. Tata, you're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to do it. However, even past this decline, Nishimura and Meatball Machine persevere. In 2017, a new Meatball Machine was unleashed to the world. This time directed by Nishimura himself. And Yamamoto, of all people, couldn't be happier. Looking back at the original Meatball Machine, it's easy to see the story of a man who started out with a small project, had that project balloon into something huge, so big that it eventually would grow completely out of his scope. Meatball Machine Kodoku is Nishimura's movie. Why it even has the Meatball Machine name attached to it is beyond me, and it sounds like Yamamoto had very little to do with it at all. And maybe that's fair. After all, he couldn't complete the remake of Meatball Machine on his own. The end result is a weird Frankenstein of all the creative forces behind it. But since then, Yamamoto san has worked on so much more in the horror genre. Stuff that is so under the radar that it doesn't show up on most Western movie sites. If he were to come back with the years of experience and knowledge that he has now, I'm sure he could make something to surpass Meatball Machine. And it just so happens that his next project is shaping up to be just that. だから、ミートボールマシンの肉の表現がなくなった感じです。もう完全にロボットの。で、今、予算がちょっとなくなっちゃって。だから、特撮部分が全部取れてないんですよ。だから、今回作ってヘルボットも一緒に撮ってる土
、うん、そこが醍醐味だと思うんでいっぱい見てください。